Our first speaker is Li Jingjing. Uh, 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 Jingjing is a reporter for CGTN, the China Global Television Network. She has traveled throughout China doing English language, language video journalism, providing the outside world with a ground level view of life, particularly in the autonomous regions and among ethnic minorities in China. She has uh, interviewed Uyghur Islamic scholars in Xinjiang and school children in Tibet. She spent February and March 2020 in Wuhan covering China's COVID frontline for CGTN. Her show, Talk It Out with Li Jingjing, is something of a social media sensation in China with 2.6 million followers on Facebook. So uh, Jingjing, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Radhika. Thank you for your introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Li Jingjing. As Radhika introduced, I'm a journalist from China. I work for CGTN. I also have my own YouTube channel. I'm very active on social networks. So you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, or whatever you, uh, social network you, you, you are using. So um, in the past 10 years working as a journalist in China, I've traveled extensively to different parts of China, especially the rural regions to understand different policies carried out in local levels and also trying to understand different ethnic cultures and help people to have a better understanding of the diverse cultures in China. And also in the past few years, I became very active on social networks, especially on Twitter and YouTube, because I saw an increasing number of ridiculous news reports, misinformation, disinformation on China, on Western mainstream media. So, uh, in today, since I'm a, I'm a journalist, I think I will show everyone uh, my recent report and to help you understand, uh, to see, uh, to see, have a different perspective. Uh, and also, I will show you the, the same event, uh, but why it's presented very differently on Western mainstream media and by me. So, um, Later, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two videos. One is from CNN and one is from me. And a little background about this event is the recent biggest political event took place in China, the two sessions. Some of you may know. Two sessions is China's annual most important political meeting that sets the yearly goals of the whole country. So it's very important. Two sessions refers to the National People's Congress, which is China's top legislature, uh, highest state organ. And uh, the other is CPPCC, uh, which is Chinese People's Political Consultative uh, Conference, China's top anniversary body. So these two are very important because it helped to set, set the yearly, go yearly goals for the country. And also National People's Congress is the institution guarantee for China's whole process people's democracy. So of course, every year, this is most important, especially this year uh, with the, all the economy, all the challenges we're facing domestically, internationally. So this year is very important. But this is also the event that Western main, mainstream media tend to radical. So um, what am I gonna do now is I will show you two videos. So I will share my screen now. I will show you first the, the a clip from CNN reports. Uh, and I probably will pause, uh, from like from time to time to give my comments and you can you can see how do you feel about those videos so let's go with the cns are you seeing the video the screen yes okay we just left the quarantine hotel we're now headed to the venue everything is highly controlled the foreign media bus gets dropped off at Tiananmen square it is very rare for journalists to get access to this as you can see though there's heavy security there are guards everywhere Normally, the two sessions is the so first. Uh, she said it's very rare for journalists to come here. This is already rare. You are there, and as I know, every year there are hundreds, hundreds of reporters from not just China, from across across the world to cover this. And later in my video, you will also see reporters from other countries. So th this first line is already weird, and it's highly controlled. Uh, we don't see much security there, uh, like in her footage, but it, even if it's highly controlled, it's understandable because this is the highest political venue in Beijing, in central Beijing, and that day is the opening day of the event. Of course, there will be 
uh, security because that's I'm sure that will happen in every country. Tell me how many security controls will there be in the White House if there's a meeting, right? So the first line is already very strange, but let's a rare chance for media to get up and close to China's top leadership. Right here on the steps of the Great Hall of the People, this is normally where you will see media trying to doorstop the top leadership. But as you can see, this year, we, the media, were completely separate from the rest of the leader. Wait, you just said you're completely separated from the deputies. So why now you under can these controls come across deputies? Well, now why are you suddenly uh, talking to them? This is also weird. Spontaneous run-ins with top leaders like the premier and ministers are out of reach. But after today's meeting ended, we had a few minutes to approach some delegates, which are a curated group of local representatives. This delegate is part of the Zhuang ethnic minority from the southwestern Guangxi province. She says this is her first time attending the Congress and she feels happy to see her motherland becoming stronger. The rest of the delegates quickly rush out before we have a chance to approach them. The question is how much of these COVID controls will remain in post-pandemic China? It limits access even more to China's already extremely opaque political machine. All right. Okay, so after watching this video, viewers may thought, whoa, China is highly controlled. All these politicians, deputies don't even dare to talk to the press because they are, I don't know, they're worrying, thinking about the wrong things, they're because they're oppressed, right? That's the feeling they give you. But I was at the same location covering the same event. I, I didn't have any of those issues. And I can show you those clips. Now, this is the report. I guess I made some vlogs while covering this, and I picked some of the um, videos that you can see the difference. Same location. If you want to understand how Chinese people's will are responded by the government, if you want to understand how Chinese people are involved in the decision-making and the policy-making process, there's no better place than here to start with. <laughs> See, so I'm not separated from the deputies. I talk to them. I wait. They wave to my camera, and uh, I don't know whether you noticed, but these deputies they are from Xinjiang, and this is the. We heard so many rumors about the so-called oppression on Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang, but look at him. He he. This this guy wearing the Uyghur hat. He's the um, imam, a very high level imam, uh, Uyghur imam from Xinjiang. He's a deputy to the National People's Congress and the other deputies also from Xinjiang. And here, uh, this frame, they are deputies and uh, international reporters. Later I will, in this video, I will introduce them. So they're deputies and foreign in, uh, reporters are gathered together. So where's the separation? Like CNN said, all these people are minorities. This guy with a white hat. He's a Hui Muslim. Uh, he's the member to the CPPCC, actually. So even just a few clips in the first few seconds I show you, you already saw some of the diverse uh, deputies uh, attending this very important national level uh, meeting, right? Okay, let's continue. Yeah. <laughs> These people are deputies to China's National People's Congress, China's top legislature, and the highest organ of state power. Hello, everybody! Hi! So, where are you guys from? Gambia. Gambia. Egypt? 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 Yes. Gambia. Gambia. Afghanistan. 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 Yes. Hi. And the rise of you are from Hainan. Yes. Hello to Hainan. Hi. So why those deputies are not afraid of those foreign reporters? Why are they even taking f selfies with them, happily waving? Are those staged? Do they look oppressed like those deputies in CNN's video?
I'm not separated from those devotees. They just finished their meeting. They are walking towards their shuttle bus to return to their hotels. So I'm holding a camera, pointing my camera at them. That's chill, chill, so chill, walking towards their shuttle bus. It's not separated, right? Why I'm showing this footage is also saying a, 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 this a, a big difference come, uh, from the CN's reporters. Remember the clip that CN reporters showing all the all the deputies are running away from them, but when those two deputies are running, there were almost no other deputies behind them. That's because they were the last few ones on the square. They had to run because they they were they were late for the shuttle bus. If they don't get to the shuttle bus. All those thousands of deputies, they cannot leave. All of them are waiting for them. So that explains why they were running. You, you didn't catch any of those deputies when there were like thousands of them walking at the same time. You had all the opportunities like I have interviewing them, but they didn't. They wait until the last one or two who had to rush to the bus, who couldn't give any interview to make the scene that they're running away from CNN. It's a heavy burden for all of us. And still, if you are catching when um, when they are just came out of the meeting and the conference hall, when they had time, they will talk to you. This is the of Hong Kong. I I saw I waited for him when he finished the meeting, and I asked him, "Can you talk to me?" And he said, "Yeah, yeah, I have some time. Let's go." So we did an interview outside after the finished meeting. So of us because we're here uh, to you know help. Uh, advance our country mm -hmm. uh, to improve people's livelihoods. Many deputies I've talked to told me uh, the remarkable improvement the poverty alleviation project has brought to their hometowns. Uh, so here, uh, if you really want to talk to deputies, uh, you can talk to them on the set, but because they had a tight schedule, because they only have uh, half an hour, between to, to go to a meeting and also after the meeting they have to go to the go back to their hotel so they had a limited time so the, probably the interview couldn't be so deep uh so you can have the contact information from the deputies and so I, I, later i arranged this online interview to further to understand this deputy's personal stories uh so she shared with me in detail the how rural revitalization carried out in her hometown, the changes and the short shortcomings they are still facing and what need to be solved nowadays and what proposals she's bringing to the national level because she saw where we, we eradicated absolute poverty, but we still have so many problems on different levels when you solve those. So we had the time to talk all those uh, when she returned to hotel. So there are ways to talk to deputies. You can talk to them on set. You can arrange online interviews. If you genuinely want to talk to them and understand their 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 standpoints. Fa 小圆楼的一个很明显的一个变化。These are the deputies of ethnic minority groups in in Yunnan, in Guizhou. So you you saw them waving to my camera, laughing, saying hi. I didn't even introduce which media I was from. They saw me carrying a camera. I'm definitely must be a reporter. So there's a wave to the camera. So some may argue, oh, because you are China state media. That's why they are saying to you, it's staged. They didn't even ask me. They're very happy to be on camera representing their people. And they are all wearing their ceremonial, traditional clothes, ethnic clothes to this event. Can you tell us what you are from? I am from Yunnan, Dali. Wow, beautiful. 
我是来自云南楚雄牟定的彝族、啊，我来自云南德宏的德昂族。这是你们的民族传统民族服饰，是不是？对。对。Better <笑> education. So we Chinese people do laugh. We do take selfies. Unlike some Western reports tend to show us as oppressed. So、uh, why I'm showing this clip is because. Some Western media, when they describe all these ethnic minority deputies to the national level, they tend to say, "Oh, they are actors. They are forced to wear their their traditional clothes to be a actor on this inter、uh, this biggest national political event to show as some some some、uh, there's diversity in China." But actually, they chose to wear their traditional clothes. They are so they feel so proud of representing their people. Yet, Western media don't even give their chance. Don't even talk to them to understand what they really feel. And most of them, they use the word "costume" to describe their clothes, rather than using their ethnic traditional clothes to describe this. And this is another deputy I talked、uh, talked to. She's a teacher from a rural level in Shandong, and she's been deputy to the national level for thirty six years, working to improve, working on improving the education system in rural regions. And、um, some may say, I was the media say those deputies don't are just there to agree certain things that people impose on them. But actually, those people are the ones shaping China. They are bring making the policies for China. For example, this deputy I talked to, she has been working as deputy as、uh, she as a teacher for thirty six years, working as a national deputy for sixteen、uh, years, and in the past. Fifteen years, she proposed. She submit two hundred and forty proposals to the National People's Congress, and half of them have already been implemented. And her proposals changed from improving the infrastructure of rural schools to five years ago to to improve the quality um to to improve quality of the classes to bring more music art classes. To the rural schools, to how to keep the tal young talent stay in rural regions. To nowadays, this year, her proposal is about how to provide better、uh, psychological consultations for students in rural regions. So even just judging, just looking at the different different proposals she brought to the national level in the past fifteen years, you can see the improvement of education in rural regions. So those people are actually making changes across China. Without them, China won't be the China we're seeing today. There won't be the huge changes in the past forty years. So by showing these two different videos, I hope people can have a chance to see what it's really like. But because those voices, those footage, would never be shown on Western mainstream media. They would tend to depict Chinese people. Don't they only have one thought? Um, you are you are only brainwashed, or you are dissident. Only dissident voice can be shown by Western mainstream media, and uh, but uh, with you, know, you can say the two different videos because of editing styles. Maybe it's the editing styles shows that one is happy, one is sad. But can those deputies really just be actors? Playing with me, like acting in front of camera for me. So those are the voices that can never be shown. It's a, it's what CNN did. I'm not targeting. I'm not attacking that reporter herself because all the reporters from all these Western mainstream media based in China are doing the same thing.、Um, that's not reporting. That's a carefully designed trap. That's acting. It's such a shame because. Uh, just take the two sessions as example. China made huge、uh, achievements, and there's some experience are very useful for people to understand China, and maybe can take a few lessons to help those people in other countries to eradicate poverty, to provide better life for them. But、uh, sadly, because of this、uh, unbalanced report, this misinformation, disinformation on China, people never got to see how China made it. I'm not saying China is the best has the best system in the world, but there's something that is available available to help all those people who are still suffering from poverty, especially those people in the global south. So I hope people have a chance to see different voices and then decide 
what do you what you choose to believe i'm michael hudson i'm appearing here for the international manifesto group if you like this video and want to like it please subscribe for more information go to the address on the screen